Let's take a look now at the power mat node. And the power mat node is here to help us create fast alpha channels where it might be difficult to pull a decent key as especially good when you have lots of fine details as well. But let's use this clip now to just see how we start to build up our power mat. Essentially what we're going to do is we're going to define two things. We're going to define what counts as foreground and what counts as background. And we're going to let power mat do the rest of the job to decide what's going to be what fits more with the foreground, what fits more with the background. And let's let's uh, see that in practice. I'm going to take our hand here and I'm just going to create a rough shape around it. And you can see I'm being a lot looser than I would be if I was doing a proper roto job on this. All right, so let's call this one hand. And in our parameters, we really don't have a lot of object parameters to uh, to choose from. We can choose the type. Is it going to be none? So it's not getting calculated. Is it going to be foreground or is it going to be background? Well, let's choose this as foreground. Is it a filled object or is it an open object? Well, this is a filled object. Do we want to invert it? No, no, that's fine. So now I'm going to define the background. And let's just zoom out a little bit here. I can take huge swaths of this and just very, very cavalierly just say, boom, boom, boom. Thank you very much. All of this here is background. So I can call this one background. And in fact, I've got a lot of things here to change. So instead of manually renaming all of these things here, what I'm going to do is use a new feature with V6, have them all selected, come up to actions, go batch, rename, and it will rename them all background, one, two, three, four. Lovely. So now with all of these selected, I can come in, change my type to background, say it's also filled, thank you very much, and let's change the color of these as well to blue so we don't get confused with what's going on. So now we have our foreground created, we have our background created. And we've got now what's called a tri map. So a tri map is a view where we can see what we've defined as foreground, which is the white, what we've defined as the background, which is the black, and what we haven't defined, which is the gray. And it's this gray stuff that the power mat is going to then go in and try to calculate. So now if I go to view my mat here, and turn the overlays off for a second, either with the number zero or with the overlay button up the top, you can see it's given a good guess about what it thinks is going to be foreground and background. And it's at this point now that we can start to refine things a little bit more. And I'm going to change my update as well from being update drag, which means it's constantly updating, to update manual, which means it's only going to update when I hit the return button. So let's create another shape. I'm going to make a an open shape here and go boom, boom, boom. And I'm going to define this as background. Hit escape just to come out of that and hit enter. It's looked at what we've defined as a background now and then brought the mat in to reflect that change. And I can do the same thing over here, boom, Boom. Define this as background. It's not filled. Hit return just to calculate that through. And we've got the beginnings of our power map. So you can start to see what it's going to do. Let's make another one over here where you can begin to see how it's going to help with fine edge detail. So I'm going to come now. I'm going to bring on a power map on this one. And let's just, let's just zoom out a little bit and start defining our foreground and our background. And you can see I'm use, I can use various different types of shapes to do all of this. Lovely. Add a little bit more there. A little bit more there. And when it comes to the branches here, I can use a number of open shapes to come in and start to define some of this up. 
cool. And as far as background goes, well, let's take in some of this stuff and use a couple of big open shapes here. There we go. Right, so this top stuff is background. Select those, rename. Rename, lovely. This stuff is foreground. Select that and all of this stuff here. And back to rename. Give this another color. Select the type. Foreground is all of this filled. Not really, but let's select that there and then come back in and find out the ones that aren't filled. These three. There we go, turn the filled off on that. That's filled, that's filled. Cool, so those are filled and these ones, this one here is not filled, it's background though. And these two are also background, but they are filled. Cool, let's look at our try map. So we can see here we've defined this as foreground, this is background, this is foreground, and all the gray stuff we're going to let silhouette work out. Let's take a look at the map and look at that. We've got some really nice fine edge detail going in and even got a, quite a bit of stuff going on on the trees here. So if we take a look at this map here, we can start to maybe define some other stuff in here. So we know that we need to maybe have a little bit more of this stuff being defined as background. Let's recalculate that there. Boom. And the same up here. Let's look at the foreground there so we can see what we're doing here. Cool. Boom, boom. Background. Let's take a look at the map now. That's working and building that up as background as well. Cool, lovely. Now in terms of the node controls, we can also bring up things like the sensitivity. If I bring up sensitivity now, That'll bring you some more of the details. And if I bring in the artifact up a little bit here as well, that's going to reduce some of the artifacting, but also at the expense of reducing some of the fine edge details as well. Cool. We can also bring the accuracy up from normal to higher or to full to help to define some more of these details as well. And if we're shooting blue screen or green screen, we can then come down here and change this type to either blue screen or green screen, and that will help there for the color suppression. So instead of just using the color estimation, you can get even more fine control on the edge using these controls here. And if we look at the composite on this, let's come in and just put, well, to begin with, let's just put a black behind it because we can use the other input here to bring in black or to bring in another color. And we can start to see any holes in, in what we're doing. But we can also use color estimation here, which is very, very useful to sort of fill in some of the details that we might have missed. So without color estimation, we're getting a lot of the spill coming in from the sky. With color estimation, that is going away as well. And this, again, helps to bring out some of the finer details in things like hair or in this case cactus and branches but of course we don't even have to use that as the basis of a of a mat that we're going to use in a green screen we could use this for something like a color correction let's come in or sky replacement or something like that come in we'll view the power mat but be correcting on the sky let's maybe turn the color estimation off for a second And let's make out a weird a weird sky so you can sort of see that. Probably turn this now to update on release. There we go. Beautiful. Ah, weird. 
at least we can see we can see what's going on with it but that's probably not an effect that I would actually want to do but yeah something like changing the color temperature up on the sky a little bit change the saturation just to boost that but we can do that with the map we generated out just by creating this quick and simple little tri map and using the power map so power map is straightforward to use we define areas of foreground we define areas of background and then the stuff in between is calculated by the node itself and that's a quick overview of how we can start to use the power map within Silhouette.